Guanine bonds with cytosine uh, via N4, N5 and O6, the classic Watson-Crick binding. But guanine also has uh, O6 and N1 uh, as potential hydrogen acceptors. They refer to as the Hoogstein interface. Um, because H bonds in this case, um, Hoogstein to what Crick, Watson Crick at right angles, a square planar tetrad can form. And you can see this as a, a very electronegative center and can therefore coordinate a monovalent cation. And several layers of tetrads can build up, each separated uh, by a metal ion. And I've added the ribophosphate chain he <coughs> here. Uh, although for clarity at this stage, I've modelled it uh, as a square planar and emitted the cation. Um, this is a similar idea, just to show the the, the way the uh, the tetrads can stack. Well, tetrads are connected by a six base chain, and the bases can be any of the four nucleosides as long as the guanines occur at local positions one and eight, uh, that is there are six other bases in between. And this is the first surprise that I found with, with this model. Um, the tetrads are obviously not perpendicular axially. Um, if the nucleoside bond angles are preserved as in the DNA strand, the tetrads don't line up. And rotating the view tends to confirm this. If they were axially perpendicular, the base linkage would need bond angles to vary quite a lot. And also the tetrads seem too far apart with this model to coordinate the cation. So either I've got the structure wrong or the nucleoside link uh, differs from its expected DNA form. Uh, and fitting the, the uh, four tetrad complex into a DNA strand uh, here gives a second surprise. The helix is very obviously distorted. Um, so either I've made another mistake, or helicase isn't compromised by the structural non-continuity. Um, perhaps the enzyme can unravel a uh, guanine quadruplexus as effectively as with uh, a helix. <laughs> um, because telomeric regions have a high proportion of guanine, these structures should be more frequent there. <laughs> this model implies the telomere could be a bit messy. And it's also unclear whether uh, guanine quadruplexes would uh, enhance telomerase activity or suppress it. I do have a final thought here. But because these complexes aren't acting in isolation, uh, in vivo, the cellular environment is, is, is of course, aqueous, um, perhaps water molecules would affect uh, bond angles and stability, etc. So a solvated helix and quadruplex uh, might have uh, different characteristics, uh, but I've no idea how to model that yet.